Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. We warmly welcome you to the sixth webinar on API Manager 320 release series. Today in this webinar, we are going to talk about adaptive scaling of micro gateways on Kubernetes. So typically when micro gateways are used, they are deployed in a Kubernetes cluster. Either they run in separate pods or then they run in the same pod as the backend. Now in the previous releases, uh, it was possible to deploy micro gate. It was possible to scale the micro gateways using CPU and memory. And in the new release, you can scale them based on other metrics. Now these metrics can be something that indicate the health state of the gateway or the health state of the backend service. And sometimes these metrics can be picked in a way that they reflect the state of the service in a business context rather than in a technical context. And when, when these metrics are combined with different deployment patterns, this feature basically allows you to scale the backend layer without instrumenting the service with additional code. So in today's webinar, we are going to talk about how custom metrics can be used to scale micro gateways. And I'm Amila De Silva. I'm working as an architect for the API Manager team. With me today, I have Renuka Fernando, uh, a software engineer who is also working for the API Manager team. And this is the lineup for today's webinar. Uh, first, we are going to talk about adaptive scaling, uh, what it means and the benefit it offers. Uh, we are trying to consider it as a generic concept and then talk a little bit about how it evolved. Then we'll move uh, to auto scaling in Kubernetes. Under this section, we'll be talking about different auto scaling options provided in Kubernetes and talk a little bit about horizontal auto scaling. And then we talk about the new feature, uh, what was done to support scaling with custom metrics and how to configure that. We'd also talk about how different deployment options help you scale in different ways. Finally, uh, we'll move into the demo section where Renuka will walk you through different steps of scaling the micro gateways. So what is adaptive scaling? Uh, we can simply say adaptive scaling uh, as the ability to dynamically scale as the traffic varies. Now, this capability allows adjusting computing resources automatically by looking at certain metrics. The feature we support for micro gateways uh, work on Kubernetes and relies on horizontal pod autoscaler. But autoscaling is a more generic capability which is supported by many IES and PaaS providers. So, looking at how it evolved uh, helped to understand its benefits in a better way. Uh, I'd say auto scaling was mainly fueled by two factors, uh, by the abundance of computing resources and the ability to provision instances quickly. Now, before IES, popular, before IES was popular, when, when, when someone wanted to host a business application, uh, either they had to purchase an on-premise, either they had to deploy it on an on-premise data center or hosting server had to be purchased. Now at those times, the computing resources were limited. So if additional resources were needed, then those had to be purchased well ahead of time. Now, due to this, when deploying an application, the capacity planning had to be done thinking about the next six to 12 months. And usually the first, uh, and while launching the deployment from the first day itself, the, the fully blown infrastructure had to be provisioned. Because changing the deployment once it has been provisioned was really hard. So arrival of the IES changed this a lot because it allowed provisioning the infrastructure quickly without having long delays. IES providers had large pools of computing resources interconnected and, and ready to and, and in a ready to use fashion. So on a single button click, they could blend the exact infrastructure someone needed. And, 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 and this also changed the mindset from provisioning the infrastructure beforehand to provisioning infrastructure on demand. This, this also allowed application developers to focus more on the feature development and worry less about provisioning. So when there are seasonal spikes, additional infrastructure can always be allocated and then they can be de decommissioned when the traffic dies out. So even though the on-demand allocation was available, initially these allocations were done in a manual fashion. So auto-scaling allowed uh, this manual allocation to happen uh, in an automatic way, rather than having someone to monitor the traffic or look at the seasonal trends and adjusting the nodes. Auto-scaling allowed 
uh, scaling the cluster by looking at certain metrics. Now, photo scaling offers uh, certain additional capabilities as well. If you look at uh, the modern business applications, uh, they are more distributed and often get traffic from several geographic locations. While traffic from a single region can be predictable, when several such regions are compounded, traffic can be dynamic and can have uh, an unpredictable pattern. Sometimes small traffic increases happening across different regions at the same time might appear as a sudden surge to the whole application. And capturing that traffic instead of dropping uh, becomes the correct business decision to take at that point. And when auto scaling is enabled, uh, business applications can scale dynamically to handle such sudden bursts. Now, uh, let's also look at uh, some of the benefits offered by adaptive scaling. So uh, we, we already covered this slide, so we, we, can, we can simply move on to the next one. And if you, if you, uh, and if you look at uh, the modern business applications, you can see that more and more applications are embracing the microservices architecture. Now, when shifting away from uh, monolith and embracing the microservice, a certain calls uh, that were once in-memory function calls get converted into uh, more expensive service calls that happen over the wire. And typically in a microservice architecture, there can be a set of core services which are consumed by many top level services. And usually these core services become the critical components or the critical services uh, in a deployment. And also, uh, so, so a slowdown, uh, so a slowdown in any of these core services uh, can impact a larger segment of the application or the entire application. So allocating a fixed set of resources to a core service isn't going to be practical because interactions between these serv services are dynamic and, and sometimes a small increase in one of the top level service is going to demand more drastic changes on a, uh, on a core service. So because resource demands will be dynamic, uh, only a feature like auto scaling would really help to spawn new pods as the demand rises. So in such cases, uh, only dynamic provisioning or auto scaling would really help to keep the cluster in a responsive manner. And another technology uh, that goes hand in hand with microservices is containers. Now, availability of Docker and Kubernetes uh, greatly fuel the development of microservices. Another advantage these frameworks offer is the ability to use a shared resource pool in an optimal fashion. Now, while creating a Kubernetes cluster, uh, you can allocate a fixed set of, uh, a fixed pool of nodes and share it among uh, different pods. And each pod will run a separate microservice. Uh, since these are dynamic services, all services wouldn't require the same resources at once. Uh, so if we, ex if we try to understand uh, by going through an example, uh, we, we can consider a scenario uh, with two services. Uh, one service is a shopping store service, uh, which hosts an API for an online store. So it is marked uh, by the, this uh, hexagon uh, with a white background. And the other service is a uh, other service is a uh, is an order processing service which basically runs a batch job at night and directs the delivery orders to a different destination. So, uh, so during the daytime uh, when users are visiting the store, more and more traffic uh, will be received uh, by the shopping store application. So it needs to be scaled up. And during the night time, uh, when the batch job is running, it is the order processing application that, that needs more resources. So it needs to be scaled up. And since the traffic to online store is low at this point, the particular microservice can be uh, scaled down so that the resources which were once assigned to that microservice can now be shifted to the order processing service. So, uh, these two services will be using the same uh, resource pool, but allocation will be done in a dynamic fashion. So resources are uh, allocated when the demand uh, arises. And this is another advantage of it by auto scaling. Now, uh, since we have some idea about auto scaling and the benefit 
benefits it offers. Let's look a bit into how auto scaling works in Kubernetes. Uh, the particular feature we developed uh, was done by extending certain Kubernetes capabilities. So knowing about auto scaling options and uh, how and specifically about the particular extension would help us to understand the feature uh, better. So uh, Kubernetes offers auto scaling in, in two main ways. As I have mentioned before, Kubernetes cluster is created from a fixed set of nodes. And it's from this resource pool different pods are spawned from. And in Kubernetes, you can either scale the cluster by adding more nodes or else you can change the pods. The first, uh, the first part is known as cluster to scaling. And it's usually done when the entire resource pool is consumed and when there's no space to expand. But in a typical deployment, what initially happens is the, uh, the second part, uh, the scaling of the pods. So initially what happens is initially uh, pods running on a cluster may not consume the entire resource pool. So when there's a, uh, when there's a demand for a computing power, uh, new pods will be allocated as the demand rises. And spawning new pods to meet uh, this processing demand is known as horizontal scaling. And the horizontal pod auto scaler is responsible for this. Uh, alternatively, uh, you can run a fixed set of pods, uh, but with certain restrictions put on CPU and memory. Uh, you can specify the maximum CPU and memory needed by each pod, uh, but you can uh, prevent specifying the actual resources that should be assigned to the pods. So in such a case, vertical pod auto scaler can automatically look at the CPU and memory requests and it can adjust the pods automatically. So in short, horizontal autoscaler is responsible for creating new pods and vertical autoscaler is responsible for changing the specifications of the pods. Now, uh, the new feature we did was done to aid horizontal pod autoscaling. So in order to understand the feature better, uh, let's try to learn a bit more about horizontal pod autoscaling. Now, uh, horizontal pod autoscaling is handled in Kubernetes uh, by a Kubernetes resource uh, called horizontal pod autoscaler. It reads an HPA configuration um, attached to a deployment and scales the number of pods accordingly. Now, HPA configuration is a config uh, which tells uh, the different types of metrics to look at, the desired values that should be taken by those metrics, and the level to which it should be applied. Now to get the value of the matrix, uh, Autoscaler would read from different APIs. And at a predefined frequency, the Autoscaler would pull matrix from these different APIs and configure the number of pods accordingly. As the diagram indicates, uh, there are three types of metrics supported, resource metrics, which are pulled from the resource metrics API, then the custom metrics, uh, which are pulled from the custom metrics API, uh, which usually is implemented by an adapter, and then an external metrics, uh, then external metrics, which are pulled from external metrics API. Now, what we have shown here is an uh, extract uh, from the HPA configuration. And if you uh, look closely, uh, you can see that it basically tells that the configuration applies to a Kubernetes deployment. And if you look down into the metric section, uh, you can see that the type has been set uh, to resource and CPU has been set as the metric and target utilization has been set to 50. So this means that everybody is allowed to consume 50% of the requested CPU. And when the resource consumption goes beyond 50%, HPA will provision additional pods. Now, what is indicated by the resource part is that it is going to use a resource level metric. Uh, currently only CPU and memory fall under this category and resource metrics are pulled from the metric server, which implements the resource metric API. And apart from uh, resource metrics, uh, certain other metrics can be used for auto scaling. Uh, certain metrics which represent the state of the service, like the request rate, the error rate, the average latency, uh, can also be used to scale a cluster. Now, these metrics are known as uh, custom metrics, and they are usually pulled uh, through the custom metrics API. Uh, custom metrics can be defined either per pod or per, uh, or per a different object like the service or the ingress. 
And usually the custom metric API uh, is implemented by a third party adapter. And auto scaler uh, would fetch the metrics from the adapter and adapter is responsible for computing the metrics and presenting uh, it in a particular format. Uh, now, there are different adapters uh, that implement uh, custom metrics API. Uh, the Prometheus adapter is a cloud agnostic one, uh, which can be generally used in any Kubernetes cluster. It is the same, it is the same adapter we are using in our examples. Uh, and then there are different uh, cloud specific adapters uh, like the cloud watch adapter from AWS and Azure Kubernetes metric adapter provided by uh, Azure. And uh, the third type of metric supported by Autoscaler uh, is the external metrics. Uh, these are pulled from another different API uh, and are usually allow, uh, and usually allow scaling pods by looking at variations in a different system. For example, uh, let's say that your application is processing messages uh, from a hosted queue. And, uh, and then uh, you increase the consuming pods uh, by looking at the accumulated messages. Uh, so you, you want to spawn a new pod for each uh, 100 messages accumulated. So what you do is you fetch the size of the queue through an external metric and specify the limits in the HPA configuration. So at this point, you might be wondering uh, what's the difference between a custom metric and an external metric. So typically, a custom metric is a value derived from something uh, that comes from the within the cluster, some value generated from a service or some resource that resides within the cluster. But an external uh, metric uh, typically comes from uh, a system outside of the cluster. Uh, like a value set from the uh, a value set from an external application. So, uh, so like, uh, however, like uh, the adapt implementations uh, typically uh, implement both the APIs. So, uh, when bringing in the support for a custom metrics, uh, you are, you automatically bring the ability to fetch a metric uh, external metrics as well. So, it is uh, in the micro gateway. It is. Uh, through the custom metric API, uh, new custom metrics were exposed and we are going to talk about that uh, in, the, in the next couple of slides. So uh, what is supported in this release? Uh, in this release, micro gateway allows scaling using custom metrics. Uh, it publishes a set of runtime metrics to Prometheus uh, server and makes those available for query. And these metrics are collected uh, while requests pass to the server and are maintained in the memory of the micro gateway. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture. Uh, while configuring Prometheus, uh, we have to specify which services needs monitoring. So when a new pod uh, comes under that service, Prometheus will automatically discover the pod and uh, each micro gateway will expose a metric endpoint, uh, which will be scraped by the Prometheus server to learn about different metrics. Now at Prometheus side, uh, the scraped metrics uh, will be stored in a time series database. So when queried, uh, Prometheus can easily return an overtime uh, summary or an aggregation for a given metric. Now overtime uh, summaries are quite useful because uh, taking the decision to scale by looking at a five minutes or a 10 minute aggregate, uh, 10 minute average is much more reliable than scaling on short term spikes. Then, uh, then there's the Prometheus adapter, uh, which queries the Prometheus server and presents the metrics in a particular format. So unless it is available in this format, HP controller cannot consume the metrics and proceed with scaling. Uh, the adapter implements uh, both custom metric and resource metrics API, uh, which makes it an alternative to the Kubernetes metric server. Now this adapter can run complex queries uh, or, or over time aggregations and present the result in a simplified manner. So uh, now what the auto pod, uh, now the pod, what the pod auto scale does is, uh, it pulls the simple metric populated by the adapter and determines whether to scale or not. In the HP configuration, we can provide a target value for the metric, uh, which is compared with the value pulled from the adapter. And if the value pulled from the adapter exceeds the value specified in the configuration, then the autoscaler will scale up the nodes. 
Now, uh, having known about uh, the architecture, uh, let's look at uh, a bit about different types of metrics. Now, uh, the metrics exposed by micro gateway uh, can be separated into two different categories. Uh, there are metrics uh, that indicate the health and the occupancy of the micro gateway, uh, like the number of concurrent requests, uh, the total number of responses, and the time spent inside the micro gateway, etc. These metrics uh, can be used to determine whether to scale the micro gateway or not. Then there's uh, another set of metrics which can uh, which can tell about uh, the backend it fronts, which gives information like the back uh, the, the time the backend took to respond, the the number of uh, 2xx responses or 4xx responses, uh, the number of total uh, responses, uh, and so on. And these metrics can be used to scale the back end. The boxes, uh, the boxes I have indicated below basically shows uh, uh, what are the different metrics that fall under each category. Now, uh, now micro gateway can be deployed in uh, several patterns. And knowing those patterns would help us to understand how these metrics can be used uh, to scale the micro gateway and the pod separately. Now, uh, so let's look at uh, how these metrics can be used to scale a shared gateway. Uh, in, this, uh, in this pattern, a single gateway uh, can be deployed fronting different microservices. Uh, now, when considering the APIs deployed in the micro gateway, uh, some of those uh, can be doing simple pass through operations, but some others can uh, do certain complex processing. And when the traffic increases, the traffic to one API can have uh, traffic to the other APIs. So, like uh, if you are, so like uh, you can you can easily spot a, a slowdown in the gateway by uh, looking at metrics like the request latency, or the uh, or the message uh, or the uh, accumulated uh, request queue. Uh, and, and upon detecting a problem, uh, a slowdown, uh, uh, the HPA can be configured to scale up the micro gateway. Uh, so, uh, so like uh, with an additional micro gateway, it will be able to handle the load. And uh, another common deployment pattern is deploying micro gateway as a sidecar. In this mode, micro gateway sits in the same pod as the microservice, and all traffic uh, bound to the microservice is first proxied through the gateway. And when running in this mode, uh, traffic to microservice can be monitored through the micro gateway. So the metrics pulled from the micro gateway can be used to scale uh, the entire pod. So earlier we talked about using different metrics to learn about gateway and microservice. Uh, in this deployment, we can use either metric uh, to scale the pod and by looking at uh, looking at the same metric uh, at different two different points we can identify if the pod needs to be scaled or not and uh, this pattern also let you scale the pod without instrumenting the microservice so in cases where instrumenting the microservice isn't possible uh, this pattern still allows you scaling the pod so uh, this basically brings uh, brings us to the demo section, and uh, I'll be handing over this session to Renuka uh, to continue with the demo. So I have enabled observability of micro gateway. So it is uh, so HTTP request count is one of metric exposed by micro gateway. Here we are using Prometheus as the monitoring system and Prometheus adapter is registered to the custom metrics API. And we are going to configure HPA with two HTTP request count in this demo. And uh, also invoking four HTTP request count. So the API gateway should scale with two ports. I have a Kubernetes cluster running in GCP and I have configured my Kubernetes cluster with installing Nginx ingress controller and API operator 120 in ingress mode and GCR as the registry. And I have installed Prometheus using Prometheus operator and also configured Prometheus adapter. Uh, let's move to the scenario one. 
So first I am going to create CRDs. Uh, let's execute the script, create API CRDs. So first actually uh, doing is applying HPA configurations for the API operator. And this is the configuration file. In this configuration, we are defining micro gateway matrices. So this is uh, CPU utilization, average CPU utilization 50 and custom metric HTTP request count to two. And for the target endpoint, I am setting CPU utilization to 50. And this HPA configuration uh, we are defining here is the same same configuration of horizontal auto scaler API version auto scaling v2 beta 2. And we can define the uh, HPA version in this configuration. And this uh, script also creating two microservice product and orders and shared API. And it also creates the configurations uh, with uh, Prometheus service monitors. We can test uh, API with this. Uh, let's execute the test API script. So it will make two curl commands basically for the product and orders. This is the output of the product backend and the order backend. Let's see created pods. I'm executing group CTL get pods. And we have these uh, shared APIs are running and order microservice and product microservice. Let's see HPAs. So we have three HPAs. And now let's uh, make four HTTP request count. So I'm using JMeter for that. So I'm randomly calling product and order microservices. Let's execute the JMeter script. And we can see results here. Uh, let's now check HPAs. Group CTL get HPA. Uh, let's watch this HPA configuration changes. So now uh, you can see the shared API gateway getting uh, getting 1.02 HTTP request. Now it's 1.4 HTTP request per second. And there is only uh, one replica. One. Uh, now it's 3.4 HTTP request per second, and still it's one replica. Now it's four HTTP request, and there are two replicas. Let's say pods. So let's check uh, HPA values and it's now 3.7 and with two replicas running for the shared APA. Now it's 3.7 HTTP request per second. So this represents HTTP request per second for per, per pod HTTP request count. And now it's 1.9 HTTP request count. And uh, it's get the its target value by increasing uh, replicas. So let's clean up resources for the next scenario. So I'm going to stop the JMeter script. And I'm executing cleanup script. So what it does is it delete shared API and created microservices. Now let's move to the second scenario. 
here we are going to scale back in inside uh, our back mod. In this scenario, microservices are not exposing custom metrics. The whole pod is scaled with uh, metrics exposed by the micro gateway. So Prometheus will collect metrics from micro gateway. Let's move to the scenario two. So in uh, as the previous method, I'm um, going to execute create API script. In this, what I'm doing is applying HPA configurations. I will show you the configurations for the API operator. Here, I am setting uh, custom metrics for the micro gateway with HTTP request count with uh, two, and I'm not setting uh, target endpoint related HPA configurations here. Then uh, I'm creating the target endpoint for the product backend and the API with the Saga definition of uh, product server. If I show the Saga definition and the target endpoint, uh, uh, this is the target point of the product. And here is the Docker image of the product. And uh, the side, I'm also mentioning the side mode here. And uh, this is the Saga definition of the product, my, uh, product backend. Uh, this is the resource uh, we are going to invoke, and it's a simple survey definition. In the same way, I'm uh, I'm going to do the same to the orders backend, and applying the uh, service monitors for the Prometheus. Uh, let's check pods with Hoop CTL get pods. Uh, we have Pod API and Product API with Sidecar mode. And then uh, let's uh, test our API using the script test API. So it's just invoking the command for the backends. And now uh, let's check HPAs. I'm executing kubectl get HPA. So we have uh, this HPS for the order and product, and it's unknown. Uh, with the time, it will be zero. Let's make for HTTP request per second through JMeter script. So I'm going to run the script. And here I'm only invoking the product backend. Uh, let's check the HPA again. I'm executing group CTA get HPA. Uh, now it's become zero. We can see. Uh, let me execute group HPA again. And let's watch for the changes for the HPA uh, resources. It's still zero from both order and product API. Uh, my JMeter script is running. Yes. Let's, uh, yeah, now it's 2.6 HTTP request per second. With the time it increases and order API, uh, same. Now it's 3.7 HTTP request and the replica count is uh, increased to two and uh, for the product uh, API. And with the time, this should be uh, become two HTTP request because now there are two replicas in the Kubernetes cluster. So you can see the order API remain zero HTTP request count because we are only uh, invoking the product backend. So, uh, let's wait for a couple of seconds because, uh, right, yes, now it's become 1.8. So uh, let me, uh, this is the end of the 
demonstration. So I'm handing over the session to Amila. So thank you, Renuka, for the demo. And this basically brings us to the Q&A session. If you have any questions, you can post them in the questions tab. So we already seem to have a couple of questions. Um, the first question is about HPA and Prometheus. So the question is, uh, is HPA tightly coupled with Prometheus? Well, uh, if you are talking about the generic horizontal port to toe scaling, uh, then the answer is no, it is not uh, tightly coupled with Prometheus. So in the webinar, we talked about uh, three different types of metrics, resource metrics, uh, custom and external metrics. So if you are using custom metrics, then using the uh, metric server, uh, available in the Kubernetes environment, you can uh, do auto scaling. And you'll be only needing an adapter if you're using custom metrics or external metrics. But uh, while uh, providing this support for micro gateways, we are using Prometheus server to collect uh, metrics from different pods. So if, you are, so if it is about uh, the uh, custom metrics support for micro gateways you are talking about, then you have to install Prometheus Otherwise it is not needed. Then uh, there's another question on using uh, security. So the question is, what considerations must have with respect to security in HPA? Uh, whether you can use a token uh, like uh, in OAuth too. So uh, currently in our implementation, uh, we are using certificates for securing but uh, there are other options like uh, there's the there's an option to use delegated security which means that uh, you can use an auth2 token and also uh, you can use a request header uh, to authenticate uh, to authenticate with the api server and these methods are uh, documented uh, in the uh, kubernetes document and uh, we can send you the link of the same uh, through an email then uh, then there's another question on using uh, horizontal and vertical auto scaling at once. So the question goes says, can I have both horizontal and vertical scaling at one time based on which logic or design and how this can be achieved? <clears throat> so um, yes, it is possible to have uh, both horizontal and vertical auto scaling at once, but it is not uh, uh, recommended. Uh, and if you are uh, the, the reason is uh, vertical uh, auto scaling is about changing the specs of a particular pod and horizontal uh, auto scaling is about allocating new pods. And if you are uh, doing both by looking at the same metric, then it can run into certain conflicts. So while, um, uh, while vertical auto scaler is trying to increase the amount of resources, the horizontal port auto scaler will try to allocate new pods uh, using the same specification which can basically uh, exhaust resources much more uh, fastly. So the recommendation is like, if you, if you have a need of uh, using both, then the recommendation is to uh, do vertical auto scaling used on, based on resource metrics and horizontal port auto scaling based on custom or external metrics. Uh, there's, uh, there's a link on uh, these recommendations and uh, we will send it uh, to you over the mail. Then, yeah, then there's a question on micro gateways. Uh, is Docker image used for micro gateways? Uh, can we use any other container tool? So currently uh, we have been using Docker images for all our deployments, uh, but theoretically it should be possible. But uh, as of now, we've uh, only used Docker images. And then, uh, yeah, there's a request for the resources. Uh, could you please share the demo URL as I was not able to see it during the demo? Uh, yes, like uh, a recording of the demo will be shared. So uh, hopefully it will be uh, more clear. And also, uh, so, the, the, so this demo and other resources are included in our official documentation. And if you simply go through that, uh, you will be able to find the steps and uh, we will uh, forward you a mail uh, with uh, all the demo and the relevant URLs. And 
we'll wait a couple more minutes to get additional questions. So that seems to be it. So this, this basically brings us uh, to the end of the session. And, uh, and, and uh, there will be a small questionnaire with uh, three and uh, four questions to get your feedback on the webinar. And uh, if you have time, uh, please uh, feel free to fill it. And then uh, on the remaining webinar on, on our series, uh, we have one more webinar in this uh, release series. Uh, the next webinar is about uh, revamped analytic solution. Uh, the analytics 320 provides a new monitoring dashboard to isolate uh, issues in near real time. And it also provides some uh, drill down capabilities which helps you to narrow down issues quickly. And uh, these capabilities will be discussed in detail and will be demonstrated uh, in our next webinar. So uh, hoping to see you all then. Then uh, goodbye and thank you everyone.